Hi guys. So today or tonight, whatever time it is for you, we are going to be talking about books and audiobooks. If you are new to this channel, I love books. I do a video like this every couple months. Maybe more often where I talk about things that I've read or listened to that I've enjoyed or maybe ones that I didn't enjoy and things that I'm looking forward to reading or listening to. So go ahead and sit back and relax and enjoy all these And before we get started, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Audible. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals. They have so many titles, you guys. They have the new releases, the bestsellers, they have languages, memoirs, thousands of podcasts, they have something for everyone. And as an Audible member, you get one free credit every single month to choose a title from their premium collection, which is then yours to keep in your library forever. You also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. You can download or listen to their titles all you want. And the new included selection of titles makes an Audible membership so much more valuable. It gives all members a chance to discover new favorites and new formats, like the exclusive words and music series or a podcast. So as the chaos of these very warm summer months finally comes to an end, I think we're all in need of a little reset. And Audible is such a great way to find inspiration for any kind of habit I'm looking to build. And you guys, right now, that habit for me is running. I don't like running. I'm not good at running. And so I was looking for something to kind of reframe how I saw running. And for me, that title is Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. So the whole point of this story, it's a nonfiction book, is to show you how human and natural running is when you do it right. And it's really specifically about long distance running, which is totally foreign to me. I didn't really know anything about it. And it was completely successful in changing how I saw running. I really recommend it. And it's a really, really good story. The Audible app is super easy to use and makes listening really convenient. As many of you know, I just got done traveling a bunch this summer and being stuck on an airplane and the offline feature of Audible meant that I was not dying of boredom the whole time. The app is also free to download and you can start your 30-day free trial by going to audible.com slash Sarah L or texting Sarah L to 500 500. So thank you again Audible for sponsoring this video. Okay guys, so let's get started with Born to Run because I finished it literally today. So this is Born to Run, a hidden tribe, super athletes, and the greatest race the world has never seen. By Christopher McDougall. So this was 11 hours, um, which is pretty long for audiobooks. I may be right on average, um, but it flew by for me. A little background really quick. I tried reading this book like 10 years ago. 
um, and I couldn't get into it, and I might have been too young. Honestly, nonfiction has been something that I have not really been that into until the past five years or so. Um, so I started it, kind of got bored and put it away, right? I couldn't connect to it. But now as a 28-year-old and someone who is starting to try, even if I don't fully get into run running, I want to know why so many people running is a huge part of their life. It like kind of fascinates me because I go running every once in a while and even though it feels good, like the endorphins, I like genuinely hate it. I'm not good at it. Every, even one mile feels like the worst thing in the world to me. So this book, the whole premise is the author, Christopher McDougall. He likes running, but he's starting to get injured while running. And that's another thing that I've heard about a lot is that if you are a runner, you're going to hurt your knees, you're going to hurt your ankles and your feet, and that running is bad for you and bad for your body. And that, I was always like, why would anyone do something that is bad for you? And they say, you know, swimming is better. Things like that, you know. So the book tries to answer that question. If humans are natural born runners and how we used to hunt animals would be to run them down and we're just like naturally these like we can run run really 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 far distances and I was like how is that possible if it sucks so much to me so I came in to this book with a unique perspective I think listen or read this book who are already runners. So if you are not a runner, I still think this will be a really interesting listen. Also, he's a good writer, McDougall. He um, was a journalist for a long time, a really prolific journalist. And you can kind of get that when you're listening because it's He's a little dramatic sometimes, and the narrator kind of goes with that, and sometimes you kind of want to roll your eyes at some of the descriptions, but honestly, this title, Born to Run as a Story, I think is perfect as an audiobook. I don't know why, I don't know if it was the narrator, but it's like very high up on my list of favorite audiobooks. It's like a podcast. I feel like a good nonfiction is always a little bit like that. Like if you took a good podcast and made it very long. Um, it even had more of a story than I was expecting. He does a really good job of explaining these ultra marathon races and leading you along like who's gonna win, who's gonna get hurt, like very much in a movie way. And he also does a really good job of bringing a lot of these characters that they're real people. They're real people, they're real people, but they're characters to us. He brings them to life really well and ex gives really good anecdotes and and the narrator does like voices for like this like California girl who's a runner. He like puts on silly voices and normally I roll my eyes at things like that, but for some reason it really worked. Let me read you a little more about it. I don't want to spoil anything, though it's hard to spoil nonfiction. Um, and also, it a huge part of it takes place in Mexico. I don't know if you know, I lived in Mexico for two and a half years. It is a country very dear to my heart. Um, and so, learning more about this subculture in Mexico, in the Copper Canyons, was super fascinating for me personally. Here's the summary. Isolated by Mexico's deadly Copper Canyons, the blissful Dara Umara Indians have honed the ability to run hundreds of miles without rest or injury. Injury. In a riveting narrative, award-winning journalist an often injured runner, Christopher McDougall, 
sets out to discover their secrets. In the process, he takes his readers from science labs at Harvard to the sun-baked valleys and freezing peaks across North America. Wherever growing numbers of ultra runners are pushing their bodies to the limit, and finally to a climat climactic race in the Copper Canyons that pits America's best ultra runners against the tribe, McDougall's incredible story will not only engage your mind, but inspire your body when you realize that you, indeed all of us, were born to run. I feel like I could talk about this title the whole video. I have a lot to say about it. I just, I really didn't know anything about these human beings who run a hundred miles. Like, that's so far from my world and like people I know and things like that. It was super fascinating. And the book was written, you know, 13 years ago, 14 years. And then a lot has changed even since then. He talks a lot about the impact of modern day running shoes and how they're kind of detrimental to running and how the human body is meant to run on as close to barefoot as we can get. A lot of things that I'd heard about and he explained a lot about. I'm still going to do my own research before taking everything at face value. Um, and those parts were honestly kind of my least favorite parts of the audiobook. My favorite was him talking about the Tarumara, the people in this ultra running world. To get a little personal, my partner's sister is a base jumper, so she jumps off of bridges and cliffs with a parachute and she is just so eclectic and all her friends are so in their own little world of this extreme sport and him talking about these various ultra runners and like these really you know very interesting human beings reminded me a lot of her community so that was fun for me personally. Anyways, honestly, like a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Yeah, highly recommend it. And like I said, I feel like I could talk about this one for a long time, so I'm going to cut it short. If you've read it or listened to it, let me know. And I'll probably talk your ear off. I have immensely enjoyed recently is the secret history by Donna Tartt. I think in my last book video I had just started this book and I could tell that I was going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> was so good, you guys. Um, I read it at this point, like, two months ago. And I'm still thinking about it. I think it's perfect for the fall or winter. So, if you're looking for, like, a cozy... Okay, it's not cozy. I don't know why I use that word. It's nice to be cozy when you're reading it because it's kind of like a dark academia murder mystery of sorts. Suspenseful. Um, don't be betrayed by this cheesy cover. It was beautifully written, beautifully paced. All the characters, most of the characters, were very well built fleshed out. Um, 
I don't know what, I don't even know what to say. It was so good. Also, like, almost a perfect 10. If you are coming at it from the angle of, like, it's like a perfect 10 as far as, like, dark academia goes, if that makes sense. It's not my favorite book of all time, of course, but I enjoyed it. Let me tell you what it's about, even though I already talked about it in the last video. Richard Pappen had never been to New England before his 19th year. Then he arrived at Hampton College and quickly became seduced by the sweet, dark rhythms of campus life. In particular, by an elite group of five students. Greek scholars. Worldly, self-assured, and at first glance, highly unapproachable. Yet, as Richard was accepted and drawn into their inner circle, he learned a terrifying secret that bound them to one another. A secret about an incident in the woods in the dead of night, where an ancient rite was brought to brutal life and led to a gruesome death. And that was just the beginning. I feel like this book has a little bit of a cult following. Maybe bigger than that at this point. Just normally for like, kind of suspenseful thriller type novels. I feel like they're not normally written this well. And this, the prose, just like you can tell Donna Tart is such a smart lady. <laughs> Let's do some page turning. This is one of those books I'm gonna reread someday. Kind of like a scary movie or a, a suspense movie where when you rewatch it, you notice everything with new eyes, all of the, the hints and the clues. Also, <laughs> the cover is falling off. another one I highly, highly recommend. I wouldn't necessarily say it's an easy read. It sounds a little academic. It feels a little bit like a book you might have read in English class in high school, which for me, English was my favorite class, so. should I say about it? Um, I really liked the main character. I like that he was kind of this poor kid introduced from California, introduced to this like whole new world of New England and like old money, um, which is something I've never been to New England. Well, I've been to New York City now, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> Connecticut, Vermont type thing. I've never been. So I felt very much like the protagonist, kind of seeing this almost like new country. Um, I really liked him. Gosh, just everything was so well-timed and well-paced. Things happen without you expecting them. Um, the dialogue is fun and witty 
I just really recommend it. I don't need, I don't know what else to say. And again, I think it's perfect for fall. So, if you're looking for a little bit of like a moody, like spooky, it's not really spooky, but like a moody, dark academia read, highly recommend. So I actually don't have a crazy amount of books and audiobooks that I have listened to or read recently. And I have an excuse. Let me show you the excuse. <laughs> it is because this monster right here took me quite a while to finish. This is another one I talked about in my last video. I was very excited to read this because I've heard amazing things. It is a fantasy book. It is a one shot. Or what's the word for that? It's a standalone fantasy novel. Um, which is pretty rare, honestly. I feel like most fantasy novels are like Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire. Pretty much most fantasy books are part of a series. This is standalone. <sighs> However, it probably could have been two books. And here's my hot take. It should have been a series. <laughs> I... I liked it. I did not like it as much as I thought I would. I feel like this is <laughs> that's something I say a lot. And I need to stop being influenced by, like, other booktubers and things like that. Um, because I, if I get too hyped, I end up a little disappointed. And for things like The Secret History, I didn't know much going into it, and it was that much better, because I didn't know anything about it. So this is an epic fantasy novel with multiple POVs, multiple characters, a huge world, the east, the west, and the south, which are like, it's like the east is like an Asian inspired culture, the west is a European inspired culture, and the south is like an Arabic inspired culture. It's a huge world with religions and cultures and characters and it should have been like three or four books rather than just one big book because the author had such a huge vision and you can tell she really wanted to include a lot of like history and language and all these things though in a way Maybe she didn't need to build them up as much because she was drawing heavy influence from the real world. Like the religion of the West is obviously Christianity. Things like that. Or like not, it isn't Christianity, but it's based on Christianity. And like, you can kind of tell that, like, Seiki is based on Japan, and, you know, blah blah blah. The strength of this book is definitely the romance. It, if you weren't aware, um, well, let me read you this review. A feminist successor, successor to The Lord of the Rings because many of the main characters, if not 80% of them, are women. Um, and it's also a WLW romance. Um, so it has like lesbian and gay relationships, which I thought was the strength, like the romance was the strength of this. 
the world building was interesting. I really didn't connect with too many of the characters besides one or two, and I felt like they just needed more time. Like, I needed more anecdotes and more examples of the character rather than just being told who the character was. And I'm really I'm a little disappointed, you guys. I think I'm only disappointed because I had such high hopes. And I just really found myself wishing it was like two or three books. Um, something funny that happened in this book. So like many fantasy books, there is this big fight that's going to happen at the end. Climax battle, right? I was like here Or like here in the book and that big fight had not happened yet and I was like I'm like 95% done with this book When is this big fight gonna happen? And then it kind of happens very quickly towards the end It was good but The whole time I felt the pacing was a little off the good parts were good, and then there were a lot of parts that were kind of slow. It's hard to recommend this because it's such a big book. And that's a testament to me actually enjoying it because I finished it, you know? Like, I'm not going to finish a book that, that big if I didn't enjoy it. But I'm saying, if you're looking for like an L, a WLW romance fantasy, check out Giddy in the Night. That's all I'm gonna say. But I did like it. If you've read it, let me know what you think. Maybe you totally don't agree with what I'm saying, and you loved all the characters, and you thought the pacing was really good. I just think it should have been like three books. Here's what I'm listening to right now. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Narrator narrated by Peter Coyote. 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 This cover before. So this is a wildly popular self-help spiritual guidance type book. Um, it's only two hours and 30 minutes. And I'm about halfway through. My Spanish teacher recommended this book. My mom, I remember seeing this book on our, on her dresser, like, so long ago, like, 16 years ago or something. And despite knowing how popular this is, I never really knew what it was about. So after my Spanish teacher recommended this, She is a bit more spiritual than me. Um, I really didn't know what to expect, and so like I said, I'm like halfway through it at this point. Let's read, let me read the synopsis, and then I'll talk about what I'm feeling right now. In the Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz, Miguel Ruiz, <laughs> reveals the source of self-limiting beliefs that rob us of joy and create needless suffering. Right off the bat, that resonated with me, just kind of getting stuck in my own head and making myself miserable for no reason. Based on ancient Toltec wisdom, the, the Four Agreements, 
offer a powerful code of conduct that can rapidly transform our lives to a new experience of freedom, true happiness, and love. Don Miguel Ruiz has dedicated his life to sharing the wisdom of the ancient Toltec. For more than two decades, he has guided others towards their personal freedom. Today, he continues to combine his unique blend of ancient wisdom and modern-day awareness through journeys to sacred sites around the world. Okay, so... The audiobook... How do I describe this? It's soothing. It's very spiritual. There's flute music sometimes. And I don't think I'm far enough into it to have a genuine opinion yet. He really does offer some good advice. And he breaks it down by these four agreements. And let me read you what these four agreements are. Miles. For example, agreement one, be impeccable with your word. I really liked this one. Um, I found it very valuable. Agreement two, don't take anything personally. Agreement three, don't make assumptions. And I haven't even gotten to this one yet. Agreement four, always do your best. And I might be doing... title a bit of disservice by spoiling this a little, but I'm struggling a little with it right now, even though I'm enjoying it. Again, it's only two and a half hours, so I can knock it out in just like one long drive, which I'm probably going to do very soon. Um, and then I'll update you guys on the next video I make. I like to consider myself very open-minded, but the, the way he talks and like the spiritual aspect of this is a little cheesy um, right now. And I'm trying to come at it with an open mind. Again, this is so famous. And some of the reviewers are saying they didn't like the narrator or the flute, flute music, but honestly, book is already kind of like that, so I don't mind that. It kind of feels like a guided meditation or like a very soothing thing to listen to before bed. The narrator is very good. I have no problems with him. Um, if you've read this, did it change your life? Some people swear by this book. I think the height of its popularity was like 15 years ago or like 10 years ago but yeah I'm struggling a little though I am kind of drawing certain things from it that I'm appreciating but it's kind of with me ignoring some of the cheesier stuff so if you've read this let me know I really do like listening to audiobooks like this, though, that are only like two and a half, three hours long, because it feels so much more productive than a movie, and you feel satisfied. You can be like, I've read that, and I've listened to that, without taking much time. So yeah, let me know if you've read it. I'm scared to tell my Spanish teacher that I don't really get the hype yet. Lastly, I'm going to talk about a book I just now bought that I am so excited about. Drumroll. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Once again, if you have been following me for any amount of time, you probably know that Barbara... Miss Barb 
is, I think, my favorite author at this point. She wrote my favorite book, Poison Road Bible. You know, favorite book means a lot of things to different people, but in terms of, like, impact at that time in my life, Poison Road Bible. And I read Animal, something by her, The Bean Trees, Pig, like, I read a lot by her. But I still found that um, Poisonwood Bible was like on a league of its own and the rest of the book she had written hadn't impacted me the same way. However, this book is her latest book. It came out in 2022 and it won a Pulitzer Prize. And I think Poisonwood Bible also won one of those. They won a bunch of awards. Everybody is talking about this book. Miss Kingsolver is Mrs. Kingsolver is back in the news. Um, everybody is very excited, and it's kind of weird when you've liked something for a long time, but you don't really know anyone who also liked it, and then it kind of blows up again, and you're like, oh, I've been, I've been obsessed with her for years now. It feels like that. I feel so happy for her to have another, like, huge hit book. At the same time, despite being, like, a big fan of hers, I don't know what this book is about. You can see my $5 off Barnes & Noble here, which is funny. I try not to buy you um, new books that often. I try to buy them used. And I called, like, two used bookstores and asked if they had it and they didn't because it's so new. So I was like, I'll just go buy it. So funny enough, I just picked this up today, by the way, even though I've been talking about it for a while, like how excited I am to read it. I don't really like to know too much about a book before I read it because that thing happens that I was talking about where I build up expectations and then I'm inevitably disappointed. So this, reading this summary is the first time I've read the summary. I literally don't know anything about it, so we're reading it together. It's kind of fun. Okay. A masterpiece of contemporary American fiction, Demon Copperhead captures the heart as it evokes a young hero's unforgettable journey to maturity in the mountains of southern Appalachia. Appalachia. Okay, I didn't even know it takes place in Appalachia. I know Barbara, I'm calling her by her first name like we're friends, has lived in like Kentucky, I think, Arizona, and she lived in the Congo for a while, which is where the Poison of Bible takes place, and I know that she draws a lot of inspiration from places that she's lived. So, that's my little fun fact. Demon Copperhead is the story of a boy born to a teenage single mother in a single wide trailer, with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks and coppered colored hair, a caustic wit, and a fierce talent for survival. In a plot that never pauses for breath, relayed in his own unsparing voice, Demon, I guess that's his name, braves the modern perils of foster care, child labor, derelict schools, athletic success, addiction, disastrous loves, and crushing losses. Through all of it, he reckons with his own invisibility in a popular culture, where even the superheroes have abandoned rural people in favor of cities. Many generations ago, Charles Dickens wrote David Copperfield from his experience as a survivor of institutional poverty and its damages to children in his society. Those problems have yet to be solved in ours. Dickens is not a prerequisite for readers of this novel, but he provided its inspiration. In transposing his epic novel to her own place and time, I didn't know this, King Solver has enlisted his anger and compassion, and above all, his faith in the transformative powers of a good story. 
Demon Copperhead, Copperhead speaks for a new generation of lost boys and all those born into beautiful, cursed places they can't imagine leaving behind. Oh, I'm so freaking excited for this, you guys. So excited. Something I was thinking of doing, which I haven't decided yet, is I might do a book club with this book on my Discord. And you get access to my Discord if you're part of my Patreon community. Though I was thinking if I wanted to start doing more regular book clubs, I might add like a $1 tier to my Patreon just to be a part of the Discord or something like part of the book club. This cover though. Isn't that beautiful? Animal Dreams <laughs> and Pigs in Heaven. I couldn't remember the names of the other books I had read by her, but I've read quite a few. very excited about this. I'm, I really think I'm gonna like it. Okay guys, so that is all. Like I said, I don't have that many to talk about this time. Um, I know I'm going to buy The Fourth Wing, which is another fantasy novel about dragons, <laughs> um, soon, so. Priory just took so long for me to finish because it's so big. But as always, I love making book-related videos. I love everyone who watches them and kind of talks about it in the comments. It just makes my, my heart so happy. So go ahead and talk about what you're reading, what you recommend, anything like that. And especially if you like audiobooks, I also obviously love audiobooks. Let me know what your favorites are so I can use my credit on Audible to check them out. I particularly like non-fiction audiobooks so, so if you have a recommendation there, I would love that. Okay guys, well thank you so much for spending this time with me.